Here we have a finite element analysis model of the tuning fork. We're using a software package called Abacus. So here we can see the three-dimensional meshed model of the fork. We're using the software to perform what's called a modal analysis of the tuning fork. It will show us all of the natural frequencies along with their corresponding mode shapes. This simulation is of unconstrained motion, so we don't have any boundary conditions on the end of the tuning fork. The result is we get six rigid body modes that correspond to the unconstrained motion. All right, so the first real mode of vibration is the seventh mode. And here it's reporting a frequency of about 550. That's a little larger than our, than our fork is, but we don't know the exact material properties of the tuning fork, so we had to estimate those. Again, this window is listing all of the modes identified by the modal analysis. Again, the first six are rigid body motion modes because this is an unconstrained simulation. Mode 7 is the first mode that we hear, and that's 547 here. And we have several other modes of vibration we're going to visualize in a little bit. And again, the higher frequency that we hear in the tuning fork is mode 11, which is vibrating at 3288. This is the first or fundamental mode which corresponds to the frequency that we hear of the tuning fork. Obviously, the amplitude of this motion is exaggerated in this animation, so we can clearly see the, the mode shape and its motion. You'll notice the time motion is symmetric. This results in balanced forces, so we don't feel any strong force at the support. So our fingers do not dampen this motion. It's allowed to ring. This is the second mode of vibration. Each higher mode corresponds to a higher frequency. This is an example of an unbalanced mode. As the fork vibrates this way, we have large motion at the support. So obviously our fingers would dampen this motion out early on after hitting the fork. So we don't hear this frequency in the tuning fork motion. This is the third mode of vibration which is also unbalanced. See, we have large motion at the support. So obviously our fingers would dampen this motion as well. This is the fourth mode, also unbalanced. It's an out-of-plane vibration. And this is the fifth mode. This is the next mode which, which is balanced. We have very little motion at the support. So when you strike the tuning fork, this high-frequency sound can be heard, although it does die out faster than the first mode vibration. Again, notice that the time motion is symmetrical helping to create this balanced motion and no motion at the support. This is the sixth mode, which is actually very similar to the second mode of vibration, which is a torsional vibration. We just have more complex motion in the, in the tines during the twisting. Again, it's unbalanced because of the motion at the bottom. With higher modes, the mode shapes become more complicated, more sinusoidal, but the motions are very similar to the lower modes. But again, they are occurring at a higher frequency and a more complicated shape. This is the eighth mode. Again, it's out of plane vibration with a more complicated mode shape and higher frequency. This is the ninth mode. Its frequency is more than 10 times the first mode. And we're getting a complicated piston type motion of the tines caused by more vibration in the base of the fork. And again, this is a very unbalanced mode because of the extreme motion of the support. The first simulation was of unconstrained motion, so we had no support on the end. But when you hold the tuning fork, you're adding constraints and adding structure, which has material properties as well. That can affect the vibrations and the mode shapes and introduce more mode shapes and vibrations. Here's the results of the modal analysis with our constrained optimization. As you can see, because this is a constrained model, we no longer have the rigid body modes. But we have some additional modes due to the vibration of the structure we've added. In fact, the first two modes here, at 104 hertz and 187 hertz, represent vibration of the structure, as we'll see in the animations. And here, the third mode represents the first balance vibrational mode of the tuning fork. This is the first mode of vibration, which is due mostly to the support. This is the second mode, also due to vibration of the support, allowing out-of-plane motion of the fork. This is the third mode, which corresponds to the first balance vibrational mode of the fork. This is the same mode we saw in the unconstrained simulation before. You'll note that there's very little force or motion at the support, so our added structure has no effect or very little effect on this vibration. Again, this is the main vibration we hear when we strike a fork and hold it. This is the fourth mode, which is the first combined mode where we have vibration of both the structure and the fork and this is a torsional vibration of each. 
This is the fifth mode, which is also a combined vibrational mode of our support and the fork. We're getting a lot of vibration of the fork at its base. Again, this type of mode cannot exist when we're holding the fork with our finger because there's too much relative motion and that motion would be damped out. This is the twelfth mode. I've skipped several modes that represent other unbalanced and kind of unrealistic motions. This is the second balanced mode of vibration of the fork, which we saw with the unconstrained simulation. As you can see with this mode, there is a slight amount of motion of the base due to the motion of these tines. So there would be some damping in our fingers holding the support. This is not a totally balanced mode. So you would expect this higher frequency sound to dampen out faster. And that is the case when you listen to the fork. You hear the higher pitch dampen out faster.